to tell us just a little bit more about why parasitism is uh, for the veterinarian uh, and the farmers such uh, an important topic? Mm -hmm. Well, um, y the consequences of infection by parasites are diverse. Um, the most common and frequent one is going to be a subclinical infection where we won't see much symptoms unless we go looking for them. That means there's going to be loss of production, there's going to be milk loss um, or loss in milk yield or loss in body growth for the meat sheep. Um, but there can also be some clinical symptoms. So there, if we start, for example, at the head of the sheep, we can look at the sheep's eyes and we can see various degrees of anemia. And we can see there's a, there can be a submandibular edema. Um, then we can also see sometimes, such as the farmer with whom we're working here, she saw changing in the fleece aspect also. Uh, we can see animal, animals that are weakening and we can see animals sometimes that have diarrhea. Um, but on the flock, we won't see all of these symptoms at the same time. They'll be manifested by um, different animals, but usually only some animals within the flock. What species would you say are the most relevant to parasitism such as you described it? Sheep can harbor many different types of parasites, but the ones um, we were mainly focusing on were gastrointestinal nematodes. Um, and within this bigger family, we're mainly focusing on those that are highly pathogenic and mostly on Haemachis contortus, which is a uh, species which is located in the abomasum. And it's highly pathogenic because the last larval stages and the adult stages feed off their host's blood. Um, and that's why it's really highly pathogenic. Uh, the two other species we mainly focus on are Teladorsagia circumcincta, also located in the abomasum, but mainly um, provokes diarrhea on its hosts. And the last one is called um, Trichostrongylus caliburiformis, and it's located in the proximal part of the small intestine. And that species will also mainly um, provoke diarrhea in, in their hosts. So, for you, what are the main parasitism challenges in your farm? Well, for young animals, tapeworms is often the biggest issue that we encounter in the first year of grazing. After that period, tapeworm, essentially, we forget about it because the animals become immune, and that happens once they've been infected once. Even when we have them, we no longer have major issues. What tends to be more problematic for us are strongyles. Through the research you've done with us, you realize that what we were really dealing with hemochosis. So it's truly this family of parasites that causes issues for us in terms of parasitism. We might get the feeling that parasitism is evolving and that hemochosis is becoming more prevalent. We seem to hear about it more. What's your opinion on the matter? Well, in any case, it's true that we are paying more attention to it. But I think that, indeed, it's also directly linked to climatic variations. Now, I don't know exactly how it correlates with climate change, but we do see hemochosis cases more often. Maybe there's a greater clinical presence, and maybe grazing practices, along with fewer farm workers, are leading to a simplification of grazing methods that could be causing the hemochosis cases to stand out more. Perhaps these changes make hemochosis more noticeable than before. And maybe hemochosis is also adapting to these climatic shifts.